I would like to continue with the cylinder head that we've been working on and uh, this would be focusing on adding a lot of detail to what we've already made. So I need to have another uh, bolt here which we've left room for on the coolant channels and we can add that. I'm going to simply make a very large fillet uh, that should encompass plenty of material to add this uh, bolt and I can add an edge uh, around here and here. All right, so with these edges, I have a nice flat face to secure a bolt on. I can close this, <laughs> fortunately not adding fillets like that, and we'll activate a 2D sketch. I'm gonna go to my view and make sure that I can see uh, my coolant channels here. Yep, so you can see how my coolant channel sweeps over here, and we have plenty of room right here for uh, another bolt hole. Uh, I can also wireframe this um, for some additional vision. Fortunately, we have the shaded region that is the uh, face that we're sketching on, and that's pretty helpful. Let's go to a 2D sketch. I did not mean to take off my ground reflection there. We'll add in a circle here, here. And we might as well do this all in one, right? So we'll add some up here as well. Um, I can highlight everything with Control A and add an equal constraint. It's interesting that we're going to be over constrained there. So uh, I'll see if I can highlight these and set them equal. And then uh, I think I need to just make one equal to these bottom ones. And it looks like we're all good. Next. It'd be almost worth it to make a rectangle and just constrain these to each corner of a rectangle and make it a center rectangle, but um, I can also accomplish that same thing with uh, other constraints as well, right? So if I go with something like 0.45, that might look pretty good. Uh, I also would want to project a reference figure of this hole to the sketch and maintain a source. In that way with design intent, if that diameter changes, this diameter will update as well instead of having to go through and work on all that. Let's add a symmetric constraint uh, to preserve where our holes are at. Um, come on, I don't think my symmetric constraint is cooperating here. So let me choose Okay, yep, looks like we got that. Then here, then here. There we go, we got, a cons we got a symmetric. Let's do the same thing, right? On this line, here, and here. Perfect. Now let's do another symmetric constraint. Here, here, and here. And we don't need to do a symmetric constraint again. That should have uh, covered everything. And I can see that we have two symmetric constraints, so we should be good. Let's get back normal to the sketch that we're on. And hopefully one dimension will uh, seal the deal. Let's make that 0.625. Yep, we are fully constrained everywhere. Except I made these the wrong diameter. That's my bad. So I'm going to go to the imported edge that I just made. And let's get rid of that by using the delete key. And go to this bigger one, which is what I actually wanted to do. So we'll select both of those and choose equal. And that's much better. We're missing our coolant channels. And we're not spilling over any edges. So I think we're good to go. We'll deactivate the sketch and grab a extrude cut through all. And that is fantastic. So those are bolt holes. We're not interfering with anything. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna change my view back to shaded with edges. It's my favorite. <laughs> now I can, uh, maybe we ought to consider adding some, um, let's add some press fit studs on this face. 
So we can go back to model and create a sketch on this. And uh, let's project some references here. Here and here. We're going to make uh, reference that are refer references that are maintained. And I'm going to do a circle here and here. Uh, looks like they were automatically made equal. Very useful feature. We'll go with a, a diameter. Um, I think quarter inch ought to be more than enough. 0.25. And uh, let's extrude that. Right. So we'll deactivate. You know what? I actually want to add one more thing. And that is one up here where we have plenty of room. And uh, we can make that really uh, whatever location that we want to. So I'm going to make that uh, 0.05, right? 50 thou above. And uh, 0.15. Maybe that's a bit close, but again, we have so much room for gasket here. Uh, but yeah, you know, that is a bit. 0.25, that ought to be fine. Uh, and then same thing over here. So it'll be staggered, right? Stud, 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 stud. Just like that. Um, let's go with highlighting this one over here and equal. We care about this one. Looks like I can't change my view, so 0.25, I think it was. And then off of vertical, we are 50 thou, right? So we'll say 50 thou. That should be all right. So we're going to extrude all of those. Except. Uh, Okay, yeah, maybe we could do a topology pattern because I don't, if I tried to pattern these, which is what I was planning to do, I realized I'd be taking these with me. So let's try a topology pattern on this, and that might actually work pretty well. We're going to deactivate sketch. Oh, wait, we don't have topology pattern on this license. <laughs> of course we don't. So I'm going to edit my sketch. In the pro version, you can do a topology pattern, uh, the expert version. And uh, let's convert to reference figures and then I'll just do everything else in a separate sketch. We'll extrude, we'll go with something like two inches, hopefully uh, uh, looks a bit long, maybe an inch and a half. I bet a quarter inch um, manifold flange would go on there so inch and a half should be more than enough. We can even maybe take that down to uh, one inch. Oh, that's a bit short. Maybe uh, 1.35. Let's do that. Okay, uh, let's create another, yet another sketch on here. I can do the same thing, right? Project reference here and here. We're going to maintain association and circle, circle. We're going to go with equal both here and here. All right, so we're both equal. We're going to give it a dimension of a quarter inch. Beautiful. Now we're going to deactivate and we should go the same length. And for design intent, we can, instead of uh, specifying that we can go to geometry, choose this face, and now I update one and all of the links should update. So we're going to do a linear pattern. We want to choose, of course, a path uh, probably along this axis. And we're going to do spacing at 3.5. And of course, I've gone the wrong way. I'm, I keep hitting enter and I mean for it to just update the box, but it uh, accepts the change. So we're going to there we go, five instances, and there's the studs, right? So that should hold our manifold on pretty well. We can do some mirroring right here. 
we can choose our mirror plane and then our features will be here here and come on here so we can see it update over here we're going to say okay on that this is a mail thread uh, of course you can add mail threads in the pro version and you can take the time to cut a thread which isn't necessary so i'm going to go with a chamfer on this um, uh, and a quarter inch chamfer is pretty high you can see it it'll probably take up the whole yeah i don't even know if it could generate that let's try that <laughs> It, yeah, it generated with errors, so we're going to edit that. And let's go with something more reasonable, like a 50 thou chamfer. Um, and that, that looks good to me, so let's actually edit that. And I can add some edges. In fact, I think faces are probably the easiest to add. especially if I can get these faces away from any other faces or edges behind them. So we're adding chamfers, looks good. Might as well use my uh, space mouse. I never seem to use this in tutorials and I really should. All right, so we got that down, okay, and now we have chamfers. Next, um, we could add a few more bolt holes to hold the uh, a valve cover down. We'll probably want to add some sort of bracket interface for a cam retainer that would hold some bearings. That will stabilize the camshaft, and we also uh, would want to work with our coolant jacket. So we've got kind of a list of stuff to do. I want to start off with the coolant jackets. So I think that's a pretty interesting thing to do from here. So <laughs> I already got myself in trouble because my space mouse took me off of uh, the normal plane. Let's simply, uh, maybe I'll go to the bottom view, which is over here. Let's simply show our view, edge and display, wireframe, Right, so I can pretty clearly see uh, where my uh, coolant channels start and end. If I go back to my model, uh, actually my sketch, uh, we don't have the tool for a uh, slot, and that doesn't matter too much. In fact, let me project a reference geometry here with maintained association, and that way I can pull off my center point. Let's grab an arc. And I don't think I grabbed an arc, right? So we'll grab an arc. Let's have some just sizable cooling slots. There we go. We'll grab tangent here to here to here. Grab an arc from here to here. We'll grab a tangent from here to here to here. Perfect. I want to uh, define what angle I'm going for here. So two construction lines, we have an angle and uh, wow 80 degrees that's a pretty nice angle there let's define a radius here of maybe 1.8 to throw that out just a bit and then of course i bumped my space mouse we'll head on back to the bottom view uh, we can do sort of a, a thickness here of a 0.35 that looks really good to me and then uh, we'll add a vertical constraint on these centers and we should be all set um, I don't like that edge though so 
I'm actually going to undo the vertical constraint <laughs> and I'm going to do one more center line and of course I would even recommend against fully defining center lines with my experience it just creates one more rebuild error that may not happen so we're going to go 35 degrees right <clears throat> maybe you know when I look at how this is going to propagate I've changed my mind again instead of 80 degrees let's go with something like 70 degrees I'm going to re-add my constraint and that will cause it to pattern a little bit better <clears throat> yeah that should be better for patterns Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to deactivate my sketch. And I can come back here to my uh, section view that I've done in the last video and bring it into my view. I'll also change my view to shaded as I add this feature. It looks like we're just doing a quick computation here. Um, we're going to go shaded with edges. And now I can run to my model. There we go. So there's my, uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, I'm going to adjust my view, All right? So we're going to edit this and I'm going to change my offset here to be something like negative. Oh, let's go 14.5 just so we can see a little bit deeper inside of the cylinder head. That's about right close that because I want to check the behavior of this as I uh, do a cut. So we're going to highlight the sketch that we just made. We're going to say extrude a cut and I want to say to next. And it looks like it's behaving pretty well in the preview, right? Exactly what we want. I just want to make sure it's going through all of our fillets. We're going to say OK. And this, uh, rightfully so, is not a trivial extruded cut. Uh, looks like it has updated beautifully. That's exactly what we want. So we've got these nice, large uh, jackets that we can transfer from the engine block into the cylinder head. Now should be the really fun part, because I think as we pattern this, it's going to pattern our design intent as well. And uh, yeah, we should get something pretty slick. So I'm going to undo my precise section view. And now I can do a linear pattern. We want to pattern our cut. We want to pattern it along this edge. Three and a half is great. And we want to add one more feature onto that pattern. We're going to say OK. And uh, yep, it's behaved quite well. That's exactly what we want it to do. Um, I think I even, when I was doing the SolidWorks one, had some trouble with the uh, up to next feature that wasn't evident here. So that's great. Um, we probably have, I'm going to guess that's about a quarter inch thickness, which should be enough for any head gasket. Let's do another. This time, let's do a mirror and we'll mirror this pattern and the original feature we'll mirror that about our center plane here all right phenomenal so we have our cooling jackets all done we've got our studs done we have these kind of extra um, head bolts all done uh, that is, I'm a little bit concerned about the room that we'll have for our gasket, so I might have to extend some extra face around here or something, but I'm confident we can get it to work. Uh, what's the next detail that we should work on? Um, so many good things to choose, so little time. Okay, it took me forever, but I've actually decided 
let's start a sketch on this face and we can activate that um, so for the integrity of a head gasket and uh, for just the structural integrity of having probably a high bolt force through this face possibly uh, let's sketch on this face and add just some extra material that we can send on up to uh, our flange let's create a reference figure around here so we can extract the uh, arc center to reference off of All right we're going to have an arc here from here to here and then we can add some constraints um, we can add here to here we're going to go with coincident here to here we'll go with coincident and uh, from here to here, I can add a tangent, right? And that's looking pretty good. We're going to say that these are fine right here. And finally, we can deactivate. We can do an extrude. And why don't we say up to next? Because that seems to be working quite well. Right, so we have this nice up to next uh, feature to sort of bolster the strength. Um, and that might look pretty nice uh, to have some freeze plugs that we can add in later as well. Let's do a linear pattern. Um, we want to go down this axis, but I have to select the path first, <laughs> of course. We'll select this feature. We'll reduce it by one. OK. Great. Next, mirror. I don't know why I went to the other side, because I just have to go back here. Uh, let's choose these features and this one here. And we have a good preview, so we're going to say OK. Great. So we've bolstered that. I'm going to save my part. All right, um, we want to come in and deal with having enough gasket space uh, on this edge. So I can project certain edges to my sketch. We'll create a sketch figure from that. And here to, oh, I can do that point. That's good. <laughs> We're going to maintain. And I'll simply fill this in with a line, right? We should be able to get this with a nice, simple boss extrude. So I'm going to go with a line. And I can throw in an arc. And we can go horizontal and vertical. That little extra room, we can just run that around the edge with our valve cover. And I think that'll be all right for what we're doing here. We're going to deactivate. And I can go with extrude. Uh, 1.35 isn't bad, actually. I want to go a little bit deeper on that, but let's go with something like 0.75. And in the wrong direction, of course, because what would happen if I did it in the correct direction? So we're going to say reverse. It's always those negative signs, right? I fill in those negative signs and don't know what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to lin not linear pattern. Let's do a mirror. We're going to mirror this and we're going to do the feature that we've just created. Um, there we go. So we've got that. All right, so there's our mirror. We're rounded. That's looking good. Now I'm going to say highlight both of our, our extrusion and the mirror. We're going to choose mirror, and the plane will be here. And we're mirroring to this side, and that looks very good. 
All right, little details in this video, right? Because it's all in the details. I'm going to choose a circle here, circle here. I'm going to make an arc. In fact, um, yeah, we can't make a reference arc here, but it is perfectly fine to connect an arc through here and then right click, convert to reference. We'll project a reference figure around this arc to make it easy. We'll maintain association to add a cocentric relation. Right, and then I can uh, convert a second reference figure here that is maintained because I want that arc center. I can constrain my arc to that center with coincident. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. I can use a line. This is just a real quick, dirty way of centering stuff. Uh, we'll take these two references and make them equal, right? So now we are quite constrained. We just need to know, you know, at what points we need to stop this. So. Um, as far as the the grooves go for the gasket, perhaps we can route this, you know, up along this edge, curve it in right here, back out. Yeah, that would work, and then in through here. So that we're kind of making a complicated uh, gasket groove by doing it this way, but I like it. <laughs> Uh, so I can't actually add that. We'll just give this a straight length. So three quarters of an inch it is. Um, we want to add an equal. And what was our standard um, here? Let's project a reference figure right there. And we can just use that as a relation for good design intent. Let me make sure. Yep, that's a reference. So we're going to say equal from here to here. And uh, that's pretty close to the edge, but it'll work. We're going to deactivate and extrude. Let's go negative one inch. Look at that. I did that right this time. I'm sure that the, re the uh, way that it does this is negative goes into the material. Oh, no, I've got a problem. That's a pretty good problem. Um, so let's edit that. I'm going to start from scratch, so hopefully you're not mad at me. Uh, so we've added a bunch of material here, and maybe we can just simplify our valve cover by putting a single bolt here. I can project a reference figure, and maybe that's a uh, big enough arc? Probably not, but well, that might work. Let's go coincident, and I'm going to choose equal here from here to here. We're fully defined. That looks good. So let's uh, deactivate the sketch, and uh, it updated nicely. So up, <laughs> except now I guess I have to go deeper, right? So we can edit this feature and oh, I chose edit the sketch so let me get out of that and uh, generate to the last feature there we go um, I want to edit my feature so we come up here to this extrusion oh, no this extrusion we're going to edit down this is going 0.75 let's go 1.25 that gives us a quarter inch past our bolt of course I uh, did that negative sign thing again where I made a positive number over that negative sign um, and then I, of course I did the same thing again so let's generate to the last feature and grab this extrusion again we'll edit and this time I'll just reverse great so we got that and uh, again generate to the last feature let's go there we go uh, let's do some mirroring Right, so we'll mirror our last extrude. But maybe I should have just made that whole corner and mirrored it all at once. You can tell how inefficient I'm being. So we've got this mirror here. 
add in another mirror uh, and we'll include our original in that we'll choose our mirror plane to be there and there we have it so let's say that we've got that worked out um, Yep, and our groove can go here, so that should be fine. Let's work on some oil channels now. I want to go uh, on that plane, right? That's the very center of uh, these, you know, uh, camshaft profiles. And activate a sketch. I again want to wireframe this to make sure that I'm okay in doing this right. So we're going to choose... Uh, View, wireframe. With our wireframe, we can see where our coolant channels go a lot easier. And we want to make sure that we uh, that we do that pretty well. So, okay, yeah, I think we're going to be just fine doing this. And I'm thinking as I'm going because I'm making all this up as I go. Uh, so let's add some oil channels to our uh, camshaft uh, retainers here. Uh, so if I go to my 2D sketch. I'm going to make a vertical line. We'll project a reference figure right in here. And we're going to maintain, of course, hopefully there's no issue with me being exactly vertical because then I can be rotation direction agnostic when I go to mirror this. Um, I'm going to add an arc. Right, we'll add in a tangent. And then another arc, right? Nice gradual sweep, if we can, is the path that I'm looking for. We'll do another tangent. Might as well make these equal. And I can add in a horizontal here and here. I'll come on back down to this line. I can choose a coincident and hopefully let me just choose, I guess, yeah, that line works from there to there. Did that come in as a, yep, that came in as a reference as it should. So now I want to ask myself, how far in do I want to come? We have to have a return line come through here as well. So let's actually change this view just to get a bit of a clearer perspective uh, to there and yeah so it looks like my biggest concern is going to be not running into my um, coolant channel or running through it because you don't want to you know mix your water with oil that's frowned upon <laughs> Let's uh, go back to our 2D sketch. Actually, no, let's go back to our wireframe. All right, so I want to go as close to that as I can and still be feasible. We'll go to our sketch, add a dimension. We'll choose from here to an edge <laughs> maybe our origin right that's that's pretty solid to go by uh, if i go to my front view up oh, can't do that with the dialog box open if i go to my front view that's pretty close that is pretty close um, so back to my front view uh, point six five And then I might as well make this point on this point, right? That locks things up pretty well. Uh, so now we're just talking about magnitude. So that would, well, I can give this a much bigger radius and that would be helpful too. So let's go with something like, I don't know, would a three inch radius work? That seems pretty good to me. 
Uh, large radii are pretty conducive to flow. If you've ever studied like turbochargers, you know how important uh, that is for boost. Let's go 1.3. I kind of like what we're looking at. So let's deactivate that. Uh, notice I end my sketch right on that face, right? So I can choose that face, activate a sketch. And let's see if I can project a reference of my sketch here. Yep, it comes in as a point. That's exactly what I want. So we want to say what, what size do we want our oil line to be. Um, I'm going to give this an arbitrary point. I wonder if point two, that's going to be kind of large. Point one, two, five, right? And we'll deactivate. I'm going to choose a subtractive sweep. We have our sketch selected. And I don't want that to be my path, clear all. Um, I want my path to be right here. And it looks like we were able to do that. Uh, I do not see our subtractive sweep conflicting with anything. And we actually have a whole lot of room with our coolant channel. So that, that's very encouraging. I can actually almost route that the opposite way and have plenty of room for a return line, which would probably have to be larger than my supply. So that that's great. Um, I'm going to adjust my path here. And maybe I can choose something like 0 0.75, 0 0.85, 1 even. Let's try one. That should have no problems. Uh, we'll deactivate the sketch. There it is, right? So there's my oil line. Wow, we're golden. We are golden. That's looking good. I'm going to adjust that even more, right? So we're going to edit our path and let me go with 1.25. And <laughs> that doesn't work because of my arcs. I bet that zeroes out my arcs. 1.3. No. Looks like we can't find a solution no matter what. So I'm going to see if getting rid of that helps. 1.3. Nope. It doesn't help. So I'm going to get rid of one of my arcs. Because I really want this 1.25. I really want this to go farther out. That's a little bit too close, isn't it? So let's go with 1.125. That's better. It might be a thin wall at one part, but I think it'll work. I have to go back to my front view here to really see what's going on. So go on to the 2D sketch. I have to redo my arcs because they're really at a different concavity and I bet that's what the uh, previous error was all about. So tangent. It's always faster to redo stuff in CAD. Have you noticed that? I guess because you already have worked through the design intent mentally. And we already have that constraint. So now let's go with an equal from here to here. Maybe I can be a little bit bold and try doing a four inch radius on these. Wow. Yeah, let's do something like 24 inches. <laughs> and we still have plenty of room. And that still looks good. So let's deactivate the sketch. Good. So we have a pretty straight shot that'll help flow out as well. Before I mirror that, um, you know, I'm going to try to make up for uh, all those mirrors I did earlier by mirror, mirroring things in groups. Let's make another active sketch here. And I want to start with a vertical line 
on a on a known horizontal plane and uh, let's come down here let's project a reference figure here to maintain association and from here to here let's go coincident I'm gonna go with an arc and a relatively sharp arc another arc here we're gonna go with tangent here to here apparently that constraint already exists that's awesome let's go with a horizontal constraint here here and here right and in that way our return for our oil can be something like right there I think I like that position so let's lock that in with a dimension we'll go from here looks like I'm doing an auto save so let's wait for that to update here okay from here to here let's go with uh, point 8 um, it's probably in our interest to have this be a little bit larger of a fillet uh, but it looks like one is too large <laughs> so right now we're sitting at point oh yeah point three I, I misread that dimension let's make that point five uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to get that horizontal nature out of it um, so if I go point 0.3, you know, we still go mostly horizontal. 0.125, yeah, it's, we're just kind of stuck with the way that it's working out here. So um, if I make this 0.5, we at least have a little bit more of an equal gradual type curve, 0.4 even. Um, the simple way still is just to set these equal, and we might as well do that, right? So we're going to deactivate our sketch. We're going to come here and activate a sketch. And you can see uh, my previous sketch. We can make that a reference figure here and maintain association. We want this to be a bit larger. I don't know if 0.25 will work, but uh, I'm sure for real life oil flows, even that would be pretty small. We'll give it a try. I think it will work. Uh, let's do deactivate subtractive sweep. From here, we'll choose a path there. And I think that's looking pretty good. I don't think we interfere with anything funny not bad not bad I think that'll get along with stuff well so let me change my draw style back to shaded with all edges oh there we go Yep, nice little port there. So we have uh, oil supply and oil return. That should be fine. Let's uh, mirror that. You know, I wonder. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so we'll mirror, model, mirror. We want to mirror this and this. Let's do so about this plane. Okay. Awesome. Now let's linear pattern our mirror. And I think this is my first time linear patterning a mirror instead of mirroring a linear pattern. Um, I'm going to pattern this feature, this feature, and our mirror. Let's do so along our axial path here and change direction and add oh no that's the right amount of features 
Okay, fantastic. Oh, except it uh, looks like I left one of our features out of the linear pattern here, so we're going to edit that and add this guy in. That's a beautiful update. So we've done that. You can also propagate uh, these oil features to the very ends here if you want to. And that would create, uh, you know, oil supply towards, you know, some brackets or bearings or something that's holding the camshaft in at the very end. Uh, which I think I might do before the end of the video is over. I think that would be actually be kind of important. Um, all right, we've done that. I think I've been recording long enough, so let me go trimetric. I want to save, like as in a save as. Uh, well, again, Alibra has done everything that I've asked it to do, and it's done so in a very timely fashion. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I highly recommend this program. And I'll see you in the next one.